Hello everybody, I welcome you all in this new edition of Prelims Special. This is part 7 and today we are starting economy. These are the news that, that actually had appeared in the Hindu newspaper and I occasionally have referred to the Indian Express for further clarification. The news that I have taken it had uh, you know, uh, appeared in the newspaper from May 2018 till April 2019. So let's start. These news are not in any specific order. I have just, you know, uh, kind of uh, collected it from the daily news analysis that I had done previously and from the newspaper also. So this is just jumbled up. There is no sequence as such. So let's start. The first news is Union Cabinet approves software product policy. What is the news? Union Cabinet on Thursday approved the National Policy on Software Product 2019 that aims to help the industry grow at a CAGR of 40% to reach 70 to 80 billion by 2025. These are the data that is important. Now, in a statement, the government said that initially an outlay of 1500 crore is being planned for the various schemes under the policy in next seven years. Further, the policy proposes to create a 5000 crore fund with industry participation to promote emerging technologies such as Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence, Blockchain, Big Data Analytics and Robotics. Now, these are the words that are important for claims as well as, as, well as for mains. So you should know what is Internet of Things. You should know what is in Artificial Intelligence. You should know what is Blockchain, Big Data and Robotics. And what are the use? Then there are a couple of other things also like you know neural network industry 4.0 so these are the thing these are the words keywords that is there high tech uh, you know uh, these are techn these are technology in uh, you know next generation uh, high tech industry so that you should know so it says that of this government contribution will be around 1000 crores now for promoting ecosystem now this word is important software product development fund will be will participate in venture fund having objectives aligned to this policy and so can leverage private investment targeted to promote software product ecosystem. So this you should remember, this is important for your claims. The SPDF that is software product development fund will be financially managed by a professional financial institution. So let's see whether it is LIC or SBI or whatever financial agency is selected for that. Presently, total revenue of IT and IT enabled services, that is ITES industry in India is pegged at about $168 billion. This also you should remember. With revenue of about $7.1 billion from software product industry, of which 2.3 billion is from exports. So whatever data that is given here, you should note down. And then keywords also and this this kind of you know initiative should also be in your diary then it further says that the policy which aims to increase the share of india software product in global market by tenfold pitches for nurturing 10000 te technology startup in software product industry including thousand such startups in tier 2 and tier 3 cities well these are the, these are not the important parameters but anyways you can just go through it then the next uh, important news is development skin, uh, scheme for knitwear sector launched. Union Minister for Textile Smriti Jubin Irani launched a comprehensive program for the development of knitting and knitwear sector in the country under Power Text India scheme. Now you should know this scheme, Power Text India scheme. The program, the outlay for which is 47.72 crore would be in operation till the end of March next year. The total outlay for Power Text India scheme and knitwear scheme is 487.07 crore, of which 439.35 crore is for power loom unit for three years from 2017 April till 31st March of 2020, and 47.72 crore for knitwear scheme according to the statement from Textile Ministry. But further says the program for knitting and knitwear unit catering to the domestic and export markets has eight components where the industry would get support to install machinery under group work shed scheme. 
by yarn going for solar energy have common facilities and create a new service center under public private partnership so these are the couple of important point that you that you should remember from this particular news that had appeared in the hindu newspaper then we have got the much sensationalized generalized system of reference from which india actually was you know uh, removed by united state of america that you all must be aware of so that's why this becomes important so what is this gsp's program the gsp program which sets zero tariff for certain goods from a set of 121 developing countries to foster their trade and economic development accounts for some 5.6 billion of india's export to us so these two point you should remember there are 121 countries india's export is 5.6 billion dollar to us making india the largest gsp beneficiary chemical gems and jewelry engineering textile are among the indian industrial sector that benefit from gsp now why this was taken away from india india has not assured the united states that it will provide equitable and reasonable access to the market of india this is what american president says however the region is something else that i am not going to discuss right now our important i mean our focus area is gsp which says that from the us perspective a total of 21 billion dollar in import enters the us duty free under the gsp in 2017 of a total of 2.3 trillion dollars of import according to the congressional research services so these are the couple of important point that you should remember related to gsp program then we have got next important news that is pension scheme for workers launch pradhan mantri narendra modi on tuesday i mean forget about the date launch the pradhan mantri shram yogi man dhan yojana pmsym the national pension scheme for workers and laborer of the unorganized sector was announced in interim budget of february now it provided for a monthly pension of 3000 rupees to employees in the unorganized sector after 60 years of age 42 crore worker from unorganized sector would be eligible for this pension by contributing 55 to 200 rupees monthly now everything related to pmsym should be on your tips question may be asked in your prelims examination now we have got couple of terminologies which had appeared in Uh, in the newspaper the first is what is liquid mutual fund now liquid mutual fund is a category of mutual fund which invest primarily in money market instruments like certificate of deposit treasury bills commercial papers and term deposit deposit now we have got second term that is debt security and what is this it refers to a debt instrument such as government bond corporate bonds certificate of deposit municipal bonds or preferred stock that can be bought or sold between two parties and has basic terms defined such as notional amount interest rate and maturity and renewal date it also includes collateralized securities such as collateralized debt obligation you all must be knowing that what is this cdo in case you don't know it's like you know a, a company has taken a loan and it has not been able to pay off so it has got its asset attached with it or you know uh, something which is uh, you know uh, as uh, some, something which is provided as assurance now that is coupled and all such debts are merged together and then they are formed as equity and sold so that's why it is called collateralized debt obligation because there is something these are of course these are high risk instruments these are high risk investments but then the chances of return are more as well as we have got still i mean you bet for some higher return and then you risk something but then you are assured of at least some part of return through the asset that that the company holds then we have got collateralized mortgage obligation this mainly you would find in infrastructure sector where actually the company 
they have taken loan now they have created infrastructure but say in the end they got bankrupt and say a bank has got 10 such infrastructure so it it forms a uh, you know it it forms it merges those uh, you know uh, loans and make it equity and again sell it off so it has got infrastructure backing which is about to get finished so if it further uh, you know invest in those funds through some other party this suddenly becomes lucrative then we have got mortgage backed security issued by government national mortgage association and zero coupon security this point these all point you should remember then we have got next key term mark to market basis valuation now what is this mark to market is a tool that can change the value on either side of the balance sheet depending upon the condition of the market now say you have made an investment now if that company is in the market and if you, or if you say you have set the investment or the rate of return based on the market valuation of the company or its or some indicator then the valuation of your investment is directly linked to the market so say say i i take a company say apple now if say you have invested in a, a, apple or you have given a loan to apple and if the loan is linked to the market with a with a share of the company then then in that case your valuation would be mark to market basis then the second type of valuation is amortization amortization based valuation now these are the valuation which we always see i mean in a uh, normal life uh, you know normal loans that we take say you have taken a loan for your bike so your rate of return is fixed let's say it's it is 12 percent then term is also fixed that you have you got to pay me make a payment in say five years so whatever is the interest that is going to get accumulated plus your premium would be coupled and monthly fixed or monthly or yearly whatever it is you have to return to the or pay to the bank now that is called amortization based valuation then the key point that we have come across is swift it was in news because of the you know uh, uh, P, uh, pnb scam that uh, nirav modi case so that's why this becomes important what is this swift this is society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunication and let's try to understand what is this so say you have to make a payment from a you know sender company say saint gobin which is in france now you have to make a payment in australia and the beneficiary company say is any any company xyz in australia so what do you do you this company saint gobin france it forwards its application or the request to the forwarding bank and in that case it is bnp paribas now what bnp paribas uh, does it issues or raise a ticket which is called a code is mt101 this you, you don't need to remember you just understand that some code is generated a message and which is uh, you know having the details and credentials of the sender is there in this input output mt101 and this goes to the debtor bank in australia now there the subsidiary of saint gobin which is authorized to make payment on behalf of the parent company actually authorizes or certifies because how would saint gobin australia understand or realize that this is being asked by its parent company saint gobin france that happens through this key that is passed from the forwarding bank to the national bank australia in this case the data bank now here it is authorized here because this company has given authorization because it's a sister concern now through this mt101 or the swift code that is that has come through bnp paribas to the data bank this company or the subsidiary would understand and would be able to actually you know check the validity of the message that is sent this is for the subsidiary as well as for banks because since this code is highly encrypted so nobody nobody outsider can check it now because of this no change can happen 
तो से एनी डिटेल इज सेंड फ्रॉम द फॉरवर्डिंग बैंक टू द नेक्स्ट टू द डेटर बैंक so in that case whatever message is sent from here would re would be received here so in that way every detail that is sent is safe and encrypted so the transaction that is done or authorization that is given by the subsidiary would be valid and would pass on to the parent company so the moment this authorization is done here the payment would be done to the beneficiary company's bank and every detail every messaging every authorization that is done would go back to the forwarding bank and in case of any discrepancy the parent company or the sender would be able to identify so that's why it becomes quite safe for interbanking transactions which not only involves uh, uh, different cities but at times maybe different continent so that why worldwide it is it is suggested in fact it has been made mandatory that swift should be followed and after this pnb scam it is important that you understand what is swift then this news would have a larger implication we would be talking in detail about this also because now that rbi has asked for external benchmark this is a subsidiary news and what is the news the first of its kind state bank of india has decided to link interest rate paid on the saving bank balance of over 1 lakh to the repo rate the key policy rate set by reserve bank of india and why this basically this repo rate is now has been taken as the external benchmark that we would be talking in detail also the bank will link cash credit account and overdraft with limit above 1 lakh to repo rate now here the important point for you to understand is that or to remember that sbi is the first bank which actually has linked saving bank balance or saving account with repo rate till date the external benchmark has been for the loan now this is for the interest paid on your saving account for any saving above 1 lakh rupees and that's why this becomes important you should remember the name of the bank then the next news is india gets first tir shipment via chabahar port from afghanistan the first shipment under the united nations transport internationox routier this you should remember tir convention arrived in india from afghanistan through iran's chabahar port this also is important now what is this tir carnet india had joined the tir convention the united nations custom convention on international transport of goods under the TIR carnet on June 15 2017 you all must be aware the convention allows goods to be outlined in TIR carnet and sealed in a loaded compartment the custom officials verify the carnet and check the seal with no need for physical checking of the carnet enabling the shipment pass through the countries without opening the border so this you got to understand this point say a uh, shipment has has you know originated at a it has to pass through b c all, all these are countries d and final destination is e so in conventional system if it passes from a to b custom authorities would be checking and would would have the authority to check the shipment what is there inside and then from b to c it will be a different consignment because you know every document would be created and and again the authorities would have the uh, authority to check now in this case if you are part of this convention the custom authorities would only check the seal and the relevant paper they would not be physically verifying the material and that way it becomes quite safe for shipment through which which is going to pass through various countries or various borders now reciprocal recognition of custom control is at the heart of the convention this enables the facilitative and non instructive in intrusive environment for multimodal transport of goods through several countries now you got to remember this point and you got to understand this particular concept that i have i have talked about this point and that is important related to this now tir can play a pivotal role in improving the ease of doing business and pave the way for smoother and safer transport of goods across international borders and will help boost trade between india central asia europe and russia 
it will act as a strong catalyst for moving goods using multimodal transport route like chabahar and international north south transport corridor this also you should remember opening of the chabahar port for tir is a huge is hugely significant then let's quickly understand what is this international north south transport corridor international north south transport corridor is a 7200 km long multimodal network of ship rail and road route for moving freight between india iran afghanistan armenia azerbaijan russia central asia and europe the route primarily involves moving freight from india iran azerbaijan and russia via ship rail and road the objective of the corridor is to increase trade connectivity between major cities such as mumbai moscow tehran baku bandar abbas astar khan bandar anjali etc the dry rain run of the two routes were conducted in 2014 and the first was mumbai to baku via bandar abbas and second was from mumbai to astar khan via bandar abbas so these are the details that you should know then we have the, uh, this will also synchronize with the asgabad agreement a multimodal transport agreement signed by india in 2018 now that's why this asgabad agreement also becomes important for you so there are couple of important news here route here that you should remember then we have got another key important topic that to talk about is startup and angel tax since the issue was hot issue was angel tax so the important point is to understand what is called startup so let's first try to understand what is startup for there are key important points for startups to get categorized a company as startup and what are those the date of incorporation and reg or registration should be up to 10 years so the company should not be more than 10 years old then the turnover of the entity should not exceed 100 crores in any of the preceding financial year earlier this was 25 crores now this is revised the entity should be working towards development innovation and commercialization of new product processes services driven by intellectual property right or technology the entity can either be incorporated as a registered partnership or this this registration is optional or limited liability company has to be registered with the ministry of corporate affairs under llp act 2008 or private limited company has to be registered with the ministry of corporate affairs under the companies act 2013 so you got to understand you, you got to note down these three points this entity will have to get registered un, under either of the three mode a proprietorship or a public limited company is not eligible as a startup this is also important point a one person company being a private limited company is entitled to be called as startup the startup must not be formed by splitting up or reconstruction of a business already in existence now let's talk about the angel tax not that we have talked about a uh, startup angel tax is a 30% tax that is levied on the funding received by the startup from an external investor however this 30% tax is levied when the startup receives an angel funding at a valuation higher than the fair market value now it is counted as income of of uh, to the company and that's why it is taxed now what are the latest provision angel tax is applicable to unlisted companies that have raised capital through a sale of shares at a valuation above their fair market value the investment of up to 25 crore in an eligible company will be exempted from the angel tax these are the new provisions investment made by a listed company of a net worth of at least 100 crore or a turnover of at least 250 crore would also be exempted investment made by a non resident will also be exempted an eligible startup would be one that is registered with the government i have told you three modalities of registration has been incorporated for less than 10 years and has a turnover that has not exceeded 100 crores over that period in order to register with the government as a startup the company will also have to make an online application to department of promotion of 
industry and internal trade dpiit so at this we stop here with part 1 of economy tomorrow i would be talking i would be bringing you some more important topics from prelims point of view related to economics that had appeared in newspaper thank you